This video is for people looking to get started with Docker Compose. So on my screen here, you can see that I have a Docker Compose application ready. This is available in the GitHub in the description below if you want to just grab the code from there. This is a very good skeleton application when you're getting started with Docker Compose. So I'm going to go over all these files. If you already understand what some of these files do, just feel free to skip ahead in the video. I've added chapters to make it easy to navigate. So the first file is app.py and this is our Python application and if you have a look at it you don't really need to understand what's in here just understand that this is a Python application and it's using the module flask it's basically just running a really lightweight web server the next thing we'll go over is requirements.txt and this is very common with Python applications. It's just letting you know which modules are required to run this Python application. After that, we have the Docker file. And within there, you can see that it's running the Alpine image. And then uh, it's just specifying some environment variables. It's copying over that requirements.txt file. And then it's doing pip install. This is basically just installing the Python modules. And then it's running the Python Flask application at the bottom here. So pretty simple. So this is a completely legitimate Docker file. And if you were to use Docker run, it would bring up a container for you. So next, let's have a look at the Docker Compose file. So at the very top here, you can see a version is specified, and this is here for backwards compatibility. It's letting Docker Compose know that this file is written in syntax that Docker Compose 3.8 understands. Uh, if you're in a future version of Docker Compose, like Docker Compose 3.9 or whatever, it should be able to read this file and run it fine because Docker Compose has backwards compatibility built in. Uh, the next thing is services. So we can see two services run here. We have a web service and then a Redis service. And I just made this two services to show how easy it is to run multiple Docker services using Docker Compose. So if you were to build a real world application here, you'd probably have something like a three tiered web stack, like a front end web server, a proxy server and a database. And you would be able to build this just using the syntax in this Docker file. So let's have a look at the web service as I have a little more syntax in here. So we can see that we have a web service named web. There's the build parameter, and this is specifying where the Docker file is. So I put a period here to specify that the Docker file is in the local directory that I'm running Docker Compose from. After that, I'm mapping port 5000 to the container port 5000. So this is the default port that Flask runs on. And then after that, I'm mapping a volume. So I'm just mapping the local directory to the slash code directory within the container. And then last but not least, I'm specing an environment variable, letting Flask know that this is a development environment. So pretty simple, basic Docker Compose file that has multiple services specified in it. Let's see how easy it is to bring it up. So I'll do a Docker Compose up and this is going to have a look at it and it's going to see that I don't have an image built for my web service yet so it's going to go out and download Python Alpine and basically just build out that docker file I have I'm going to go ahead and speed this up and we'll have a look at the end here all right so it looks like everything is up and running you can see that it brings you into some nice logging output and it's got both the services running it's got redis running and then web and you can see here that it's listening for connections on port 5000 so i'm going to hop over to another terminal and just test it out and you can see hello world i've been seen one times so perfect our application is working and let's go ahead and hop into that directory that i have my docker compose in so let's go over some of the commonly used commands here so i'll go docker compose ps and you can see it returns both of my containers there. It gives the state of them and the ports that it's listening on. And if you wanted to, you could stop the containers. And if we look on this other screen, we can see that it's exiting out. It exited out. And if we went start again, it's going to bring it back up. And it started. And if you actually wanted to bring it completely down, you would just do docker compose down. 
So the difference between Docker Compose Stop and Docker Compose Down is Docker Compose Stop just stops the containers, but Docker Compose Down not only stops the containers, but it removes them as well. So if we do a Docker Compose PS, we won't be able to see these containers anymore. Now, if you really want to destroy everything that Docker Compose touch, this includes networks and containers. Uh, what you can do is do the Docker Compose down, but add the dash V option. And this is for verbose and it basically destroys everything that the Docker Compose created. So I do this all the time in my development environment. So that's it. That's everything I wanted to show for this video. If you found this video helpful, please go ahead and leave a like. And if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.